Talking Raptors on Raptors Republic. Talking little Raptors on Raptors Republic. We'll talk some Raptors on Raptors Republic because they can't stop us. Okay. Welcome to another off season edition of Talking Raptors. Barry Taylor here with Nick Reynoldson. What's going on, man? Oh, buddy. Living, living life. We're doing it. Living and learning. Still enjoying the off season? Yep. Yeah, I'm still enjoying uh, Norman Powell snapping on uh, Ronnie 2K. I like, I like that. I like stuff like that. It's awesome. Turns Ross uh, asking people if he looks like a nerd in his glasses. Off season's great. Of course, as always, we're here on Raptors Republic. RaptorsRepublic.com. And speaking of which, we've got a guest. We've oh. locked down another big one. Another <laughs> huge guest. It's only taken us three years, <laughs> yeah, but it's happening. It did take three years. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend from Raptors Republic, Zarar Siddiqui. What's going on, buddy? I'm oh, man. Good to be in the studio, finally. <laughs> <Right>? You made it. <laughs> did not, it was not a letdown. This is good. We prefer to call I, I can see where the Drake money goes. <laughs> it's a headquarters, actually. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be fun. It's taken us forever to finally coordinate this, but we did it. So, uh, without further ado, let's get going. Uh, six. And, of course, as always, we do six from the six. Drake, here's your royalty money. Does he ever come to collect? It's getting huge. We're, we're saving. It's for him and Rihanna's uh, wedding is <laughs> what I, I feel like he's going to come get the money for. It's just going to be an envelope full of change. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah, we're going to put it in their in the, in the mailbox that they got at their wedding when we're invited. Thing one. Let's get to know you, man. Where are you from originally? Toronto? Kash- Kashmir. I'm from Kashmir. Born there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was born there. I was. Uh, I left there when I was 14 years old, because there was a war going on there. So. Uh, That's a good reason to get out for sure. That's yeah. a way more interesting story. I thought he was gonna be like Woodbridge. <laughs> <laughs> I did live in Woodbridge though. Oh, okay. For a couple of years, so uh, we'll get to that later. But yeah, I was. Uh, I was born in Kashmir, which was uh, basically a war zone for like uh, for a long, long time, and. Um, uh, at the age of 14, my dad, uh, he left the country because um, he was actually involved in the uh, freedom fight, as we used to call it. Right. Uh, and then uh, things got heated, and uh, we had to uh, basically leave the country. Uh, we left like um, kind of like in the middle of the night kind of deal. No way. And we uh, left, the, uh, left Kashmir, and we went to Saudi Arabia. So I spent a couple of years there, and... Uh, my dad kind of uh, didn't have a job after a couple of years there, so he went to the States after that in Kansas City, Missouri. So we lived there for a couple of years, wow. and that was uh, it was interesting, man. I had some family there, and uh, Hickville, USA, basically. Yeah. Uh, Good barbecue, uh, though, right? But at the time, I didn't know that was a thing. Uh. At the time, I was, just, I was just like the one of two brown kids in the school. Just trying to make my and the other Just brown kid, racism? the other brown kid was my cousin. <laughs> so we were like two brown kids. Like, how does this whole thing work? I don't, I don't know, because the because the tables are segregated. The teacher looks at you funny. Yeah. You got a bit of an accent going on. I don't know where I fit in. I don't even know where to have lunch. Right, man. How come you don't have an accent? Yeah, it was a little bit of an accent. No, not so a, that's dude. not a Woodbridge accent. You, you should see me talk to my dad. When I talk to my family, the accent kind of kicks on. Maybe it's true with Nick. I don't know what's going on. But uh, when I talk to my dad, like like one day I got my dad on the podcast actually, and I interviewed him about Demar Derozan. And when I was talking to him, I noticed that the way I talk changes based on who I'm talking to. It's like subconscious. Absolutely, it just clicks. Yeah. Do you do that with your mom? Anytime I hear any any Guyanese, I hear any kind of Guyanese accent or even like you know a West Indian accent. I can hear myself yeah. starting to, and I have to catch myself. I'm like, Jesus Christ! Like this, <laughs> I don't know if this person's gonna be offended. Like, <laughs> but yeah, so it is a weird thing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then, so when did you get to Ontario? Uh, I got or was to, it Ontario first? Yeah, 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 it was Ontario. We uh, we left Kansas City in like 1996, late 1996, uh, in uh, in one car because we were. Uh, we were, we were kind of struggling and all that, and my dad, me, and my sister, four of us, uh, came here in a Chevy Corsica, oh my which God. was our, uh, yeah, the black Chevy Corsica, which we bought off my uncle, and we crossed the border, and we had, like, that car and, like, $3,000 in cash, and we came to Canada, and we're like, okay, let's start a new life here. Wow. And, um, yeah, my dad worked, like, uh, he used to, like, work in the, in the snow, like, as a, as a, basically, a, like, a draftsman. He was like a civil engineer. By the time he had to take any job he could get, so uh, he worked like he worked his ass off for a couple of years, man. And uh, 
we got our feet, you know, got back on our feet. Loved Canada from the start. It was just such a, such a big change from Kansas City, man. That we were like, oh my God, thank you. Yeah. Like this is where I want to be. Right. Like, the, l- let me just erase from memory like the Men in Black shit. <laughs> like, I just want to go away and forget about the last couple of years. <laughs> a lot of cool shit I learned in Kansas City, but no man that's not where you want to be and you guys travel a lot you probably know what i'm talking about a little bit the state well maybe is, not barry but maybe <laughs> the state, well yeah i well nick and i have done a lot of shows and even around canada and i've seen like in front of me blatant racism to nick's face yeah where I'm just, it's jaw dropping i'm like the man's standing <laughs> right and it, there and it's, it's never done maliciously it's always no. like hey you know and you're yeah. like whoa Who's what brown dude i'm like what are you huh like, right what? <laughs> right here man yeah. it's yeah no there's a yeah, there's the racism is alive and well in yeah. in parts of Canada for yeah. sure, and in the states it's just a whole other story, obviously. So wait, where did you come to Canada first? Like Toronto, Mississauga. Oh, okay. I, I came to the Days Inn in Mississauga. I think it was <laughs> Tompkin and Eglinton. I think it was <laughs> where we stayed there for a couple of nights, and then we we uh, we lived in, I lived in Mississauga for a couple of years, a few years. Went to high school there. Father Michael Gates. Okay. Um, tried out for the ball team, didn't work out. It was too good of a basketball team, man. We had a Mississauga, man. What's you, what are you thinking? We no, we had a well, had Oakville or something. We, like we like basketball. went where the lights were. Like <laughs> when you came into the QEW, we're like, yo, that looks pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just go that way. <laughs> and that's where we landed. It was literally like the third exit, where, like which was like lit. <laughs> you Crazy. just came in. That's awesome. <laughs> So then, when did you? When was basketball a thing? Were you always a basketball? No, no I was always. I was. I was a Bulls fan, right? From a, I was a well, a Jordan the fan, 90s, if you want to say. Yeah, yeah, everybody was that. And uh, but uh, when we were in Kansas City, I kind of knew that we, we were going to move to Toronto at some point because my dad had got the um, the immigration and all that, and um, I knew there was a team coming up here. So I was like, all right. Jordan's about to retire. Yeah. I got to get warmed up. I'm going to segue nicely into the Raptors. <laughs> yeah. So I followed them before I even uh, got to uh, got to Toronto. I already picked them, picked them a little bit. Nice. But when I came to Toronto, it was like ready-made for me. It was like, all right, I got a basketball team. You got Maple Leaf Garden, Sky Dome, which was a shithole. We'll talk about that. Oh, man. But uh, it was uh, – maybe, maybe that was the reason I loved Canada like even more because now I had an NBA freaking yeah, team. Yeah, sports team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you don't – man, growing up here – like especially we're pretty close to the same age there was zero basketball coverage yeah. before the raptors like it wasn't there it wasn't even on sports highlights maybe they'd mention a score if jordan went off you know there was nothing it was being a basketball fan was uh challenging man i used to listen to we didn't we didn't have a, a tv so we used to, I used to listen to the radio the fan 590 or whatever it was called back in the day i think it was the fan yeah, 590 yeah. and uh, i used to they used to have like you know, sports updates every 20 minutes. That's right. And I used to like go like, okay, it's a sport update at like 21. So maybe they'll mention basketball. Maybe. So what they used to do is like, they used to go through like all the hockey scores, like all the lacrosse, all. And then at the end, they used to go and winners from the NBA, the Pacers, Cavs, and Knicks. I'm like, yo, that's, that's yeah. nothing. That's, yeah. no, that's that doesn't tell me off. anything. Yeah. yeah, they did it on TV too. Like when it's like almost time for the closing credits, they just roll the basketball scores. Yeah. They're like, oh, here's what's, what's happening in the NBA. You're like what? Like, yeah. Oh, brutal. And by the way, basketball happened. So then you're in Mississauga. You go to university in the area. Or yeah, I, I went or? to I went to Father Michael Gates, uh, and after that, I went to the U of T. I went oh, to nice. UFT. Yeah. God so damn, I, you're I did smart. My, eh? um, did my degree in uh, computer science there. <laughs> and then right. um, I don't know. I got married and all that stuff. Had kids, and I went back to UFT for my masters. Uh, did a masters in geography because I always liked geography. That's awesome. And my dad never That's respected weird. me for not having a masters, so he said, "Go get a masters." <laughs> <laughs> so I got one. <laughs> no, I'm just. Uh, he always wanted one to me to have a. What do you do a with a masters in geography, by the way? Nothing, man. You just okay. put it on there, like you, just, you talk about it on podcasts. Yeah, on sites that you're it's, on. It's the first time it's come in use. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we could help, man. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, so uh, that's great. And then, I mean, you've always been a, a basketball fan. With we're like, is there basketball? Coverage in Kashmir, probably more in than no, Canada at no, the time. No, not or? at all. I mean, the only the only thing back growing up, the only people I knew were uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay, he was big there because he was Muslim, and right. it's like a Muslim, uh, you know, it's a Muslim state. So he was like, "Hey, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the greatest thing in the world." Right. Yeah. You know I mean, I was like, "Ah, maybe he looks pretty tall. Yeah, <laughs> he looks pretty good." <laughs> but that was the extent there. But uh, you know, there used to be there used to be a magazine called Sports World, which I used to read growing up, and I. Uh, 
and I had to subscribe to it or steal it or whatever the hell it was. And like that used to have a couple of NBA pages. It was mostly focused on like tennis and those kind of things. But at the end, it was like, a, you know how like, a, remember Slam Magazine had Slam of the Month? Yeah. yeah. They had something similar. Right. Where they had like one highlight and they talked about that highlight. It was like in broken English and whatnot. But right. You got this like one image of like <coughs> Isaiah Thomas. Okay. Right? Like pulling a crossover. And you're like, ah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the extent of it, right? When I came to the States and, and Saudi Arabia, that was a that was a whole new uh, whole new level of coverage. So when you came, you're in Kansas City. So what, I guess college basketball is pretty big? Yeah, Jayhawks, man. Jayhawks. Uh, oh, Can- God, yeah. yeah. Jayhawks are right. huge there. And then the other team that's actually, that was actually bigger because the, because the proximity was the Missouri Tigers. Yeah. So the biggest game of the year there really is uh, KU versus MU. Okay. Right. That's like where you just take the day off work. Really? Yeah. And, and you check that out. So college basketball is like huge because there's no NBA team there, right? Right. And the way the NBA works is that there's no like geographical affinity towards your team. Like if you're in Kansas City, you're not going to like the Bulls because they're close by. Right. You're not going to like the Nuggets because who fucking cares about the Nuggets? Yeah. yeah <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's, uh, there, there is no like favorite NBA team you go to, but college basketball and the Chiefs are obviously big there. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Did you uh, any other sports growing up that you were into, or was it all basketball? Isn't Sa- you're a big Arsenal fan though as well? Oh, a massive man, huge okay. Arsenal fan. Yeah. So yeah. what is what <clears throat> your number one soccer or basketball? Arsenal's number one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How yeah. come? It, it it just is, man. It's it's one of those things that um, <laughs> there's a saying in soccer like you don't pick the club, the club picks you, right? So it's one of the, like if if you're a soccer fan, you know what I'm talking about. If you're listening to this, like you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, once you like a once you like a like a football team, then uh, you just follow it religiously, and uh, you follow it, the, every single result. Like I haven't missed an Arsenal game in um, I don't know, man, like ten years. Really? That's amazing. Like, I've, like I I take like I take my afternoon off work <laughs> to watch Champions League games uh, in the afternoon. Good lord. Yeah. That's dedication. God damn it, Zarar. I I also run a site. I don't know if you guys know this, but Arsenalist dot com. Which is a soccer site, which I post highlights and shit from. How do you have a family? How do you how, how do, you, do you have do, time? Do you sleep ever? Like what do you? My wife is very understanding. <laughs> <laughs> what a great lady! My <laughs> lord. Okay, so uh, and then yeah, we'll, we'll discuss more. Wait, you're a civil engineer, you said though. That's your degree? No, no, no. I I, I graduated with computer science. So we're oh, software computer engineer. science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sorry. And okay. then uh, yeah, then I'm doing something with that. Okay. Not the geography, though. <laughs> That's just a piece, just of, a paper. piece of paper. That was just on the show, Dad. Right? Yeah. Like, look at it. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Frame it. We're done. We're done. I don't even know what the certificate is, to be honest with you. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a thing, too? The juggernaut that is Raptors Republic. When did it start? How did it start? Who did you start it with? Raptors Republic. Uh, so the background here is that... Um, and we still have a lot of readers from, like, way back in 2006 five maybe even when uh, i used to actually blog about the raptors uh, on a on the on the same site which is now an arsenal site on arsenalist.com mm-hmm. i used to write about uh you know like you know rob babcock and shit like that oh, this is like God. way back when right just a piece and of uh, what motivated me to write was essentially the horrible horrible basketball coverage that existed in toronto or lack of it because what you had was just vanilla coverage of the toronto raptors Essentially, the Associated Press article, like, pasted in the Toronto Star and just a couple of words changed here and there. And Doug Smith's, like, bland opinion on it. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, there's so much more to this game. There's so much more to this city, this town, than just what's being reflected. So I had a, cu- a buddy of mine, Wally, A-Dub, used to write for the Raptors Republic 2 for a while. Uh, so we started this, this site called RaptorsFans.com. And then I forgot to renew the domain name. We lost that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, and then we moved over to this thing called LateNightHoops.blogspot.com. I think the site's still there. It just redirects or whatever. Uh, we wrote about that for a little bit, and then I met Sam, uh, who's a um, Raps fan, and he's run a site called RaptorsTalk.com. And then we met this other dude named Dynasty, D-I-N-O-S-T-Y. He's in advertising now. He's a big shot there, Josh. Um, we. Uh, we got together, and um, there was another guy called Scott Phillips, Alt Raps, mm-hmm. who used to run his own site called altraps.com. And one of us, we just got together one day, and we're like, you know, like we're doing, we're covering the same games independently. Why don't we just join forces? None of us are in it for the money, 
We just want to write about the Raptors, provide good coverage, so on. So why don't we come up with a, our site? Everybody didn't have an ego because we didn't really give a shit. We're just like, yeah, yeah, let's make something bigger and better. And so we said, let's come up with a name. And uh, I remember all the names that were being floated around at the time were like Raptorium, <laughs> Raptorolic, uh, some all, all kinds of stuff. Like, and then Raptorium I, is awesome, actually. Yeah, I don't know about the that Raptorium. One. The Raptorium, maybe. So I was like, nah, man, because I want this to be like, um, I don't know, because I, I was reading a lot of Dostoevsky at the time. Oh. So I was all about the Republic. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, Raptors are oh, Raptors Republic. That's good. Like, and the original <laughs> logo was actually a fist, but that got shot down pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Holy lord. <laughs> yeah. but, but now, if you look at the tfcrepublic.com, which we just launched, its logo is the same fist that was originally designed That's for Raptors amazing. Republic. Fight the power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. And then it just, how long did it take to become just this gigantic it, you online know, juggernaut? Within, I think within three months of forming, like ESPN called us. Really? And we're like, they're like, yo, we're looking to get a network going and whatnot. We want you to be part of it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and it just kind of happened from there. ESPN really helped us out get the exposure out because uh, at the time they were really serious about their networks and whatnot. So they gave us a lot of exposure. But I think it, it was just a natural – there was like a vacuum of – there was a vacuum basically for basketball coverage in the city because there was nobody really covering the game in a, in a funny slash honest slash – I don't know, non-traditional way. So as soon as you like, you had like alt raps. You used to write the original quick reaction called the roll call, which was the funniest shit you'll ever he- ever read. Right. Uh, Google like it's it's in our archives. Go check out the roll call if you're if you're listening to this. Funniest shit ever. Um, y- y- that kind of content wasn't really being produced. So immediately we found a huge readership, and it kept just growing and growing and growing. And the one thing that you know, the one thing that I think we've um, you know, our quality has been fairly good for, for 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 the for the whole time. But the one thing that we've been good at is consistency. I think we've always been there. Like if you look at our if you look at our coverage for for, for basketball, it's always been on point every day. There's something for you to read at Rappers Republic, even during the off season. Yeah. The podcasts are coming, the content's coming, Blake's chugging, like everybody's doing something. And I think that's what differentiates us is the sheer consistency of content that we produce. And over the last couple of years, obviously Blake's just been just destroying everybody and that's just you know it's making my job a lot easier right yeah. it's a legit uh media now you know like i mean he's he's he, like blake is at the games with people from you know the toronto star and and tv and that it's uh, it's pretty incredible yeah it's uh, it took us a while to get there if you if you look at our early um early content that we used to produce man there was a lot of swearing there there was a lot of see you next Tuesdays there. Right, right. There was a <laughs> lot of content that I, I remember. It's a funny story that um, I remember when we, um, you know, when we were, you know, in in the business for a while. I kind of wanted to apply for a press pass. We're like, we should cover it a little bit better. So we applied to um, uh, the Raptors, and we said, uh, you know, could you? We went through ESPN. We're like, can you help us get the press pass because we want to cover the game? And then they responded to uh, the ESPN guys, and they cut and pasted an article that I had written. Oh, my God. And they're like, is this the kind of content you want to credential? And it was that the paragraph I had written, and I was comparing, like, Matt Devlin and Leo Routens doing coke before the game (laughs) because that's how they sounded during it. (laughs) Obviously, that was a very awkward moment for everybody involved. (laughs) I think we've made some progress since. (laughs) That's That's amazing. Oh, that's good. That's I great. like that they copy and paste the article, though. I'm like, are you sure you want a press pass for, <laughs> oh, for this man. kind of filth? I, 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 obviously, ESPN didn't mind at the time that you guys, they kind of gave you freedom, no? Yeah, I, th- I think uh, they, they, they gave us some parameters to work under, which we constantly violated. <laughs> 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 but they didn't, uh, I guess they didn't have a great oversight on it, so it kind of slipped by. But after a while, <laughs> I got a few calls from them, and they're like, dude, you know, like, we love you guys, but just... Just don't call people cons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so it started in 2006. Yeah, around around okay, 2007, I want to say. Okay. Around there, yeah. And uh, how have you seen the team and just the culture in general grow along with the site? You know. Yeah, I mean the the, the, the I mean the culture is a weird thing to comment on because um, you always knew basketball was going to be big. Just mm-hmm. if you look at the economics of things. If you look at the city, the way it's structured, the way immigration works here, uh, how cheap it is to play basketball, 
Uh, it's becoming increasingly accessible in high schools and middle schools. Everybody's got a gym now. Your local community yeah. center's got a gym. So, and and it's a it's a easy, cheap sport to pick up and play. And given that you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of really I- I- immigration's big in Toronto, and people mm-hmm. are coming in. They naturally gravitate towards basketball, and it also helps that the NBA's marketing machine is second to none. Maybe NFL. We're watching the. The, the Patriots here, but maybe after the NFL, the NBA is just right up there. So we, you combine just the the spirit of the game, the personal nature of the game, how cheap it is, uh, how attractive it is to basically you know everybody. It was bound to happen. And the Raptors are something; they're almost like a release outlet, right? I follow the Raptors. I love them, obviously, but it was also something niche to do at the time. It was something cool. It was something different. You weren't a Leafs fan or a Jays fan. Hey, man, I'm not in the. I'm, I'm into the Raptors. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm different. It's punk like, rock. You know what I mean? It's punk rock of that age. It's like I'm with the Raptors, man. I got the, I got the claw. Check the claw. Yeah. Yeah, it's purple. Yeah, it's ugly. I'll still wear it. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of those uniforms when they uh, debuted? I think I, I think the. the um, I become nostalgic about it, where I now view them with like a rosy lens. Right. I'm like, yeah, that'd be kind of cool to bring that back. But they were ugly, man. Right? So they man. were horrible. Yeah. Talked about this horrible. a couple times in the past, but uh, Nick loved them. God, God he's damn, the younger generation, them. right? You did not love them at the time, though. I did love them. No, at you the didn't. Time. I don't believe I you. I swear to God, I don't believe you. He's, yo- he's younger, though. That's why he's like uh, he's only thirty-one right now, right? Thirty-one. Yeah. Yeah. So he's you know he's an idiot. How yeah. about you? Did you? Did no, you I like hated them. them. I they were ridiculous. They were cartoonish. I mean, we, we we were terrible at basketball, it was a and joke. we looked like cartoons. <laughs> it, was, it was the worst gimmick ever, but it apparently worked on yeah. his generation. So yeah, it definitely. I remember those jerseys. I'm like, those jerseys are sick. Vancouver's jer- jerseys also sick. I remember people. Like, when did you on those start too. following the Raptors? Like seriously, what year? Uh, Vince Carter. That's that's when I that's when I started. Following so that the was Raptors, like seriously. after the jerseys, right? Yeah. That was after the. We're talking about the original ugly jerseys, right? Yeah. So absolutely, even yeah. even at that time when the Raptors were kind of on the ascension, you still looked at the first original jerseys as with a nostalgic tint. Right? Absolutely right. But when because you were I fell in love with the team with the. The half black, half exactly. But when you were actually jersey. watching in 1995, 96, and you saw those jerseys, you're like, "Oh my god!" Like we're getting killed by 30, and it's embarrassing to wear those in a dome. <laughs> in in, <laughs> in a dome, yeah. It's terrible. I I, I got like I'll, I'll like I'll buy one because of just for history purposes. But and the team's good now, and you know, right, but yeah, you can afford no. to make fun of the past when you're good. It couldn't, but like we were saying earlier, there was zero coverage. Basketball was this niche thing, and then they just made it into this novelty. And you're just like, can we just, can it not just be a sports team? Can hey, we- man, I, I listen to your podcast. I'm a religious listener, big fan. Oh, you're the one. Thanks. And uh, <laughs> and uh, whenever you guys debate the in arena noise, yeah, dude, I'm with Barry. Boom, hundred percent. Still for you guys? It's ridiculous. Huh? Too much. It's <laughs> it's just. Can we, like, just let them play the goddamn game oh of basketball? Oh, my, here we go again. <laughs> Let's just watch a basketball game. How about that? How Why we, am I in the can, building? You can watch the basketball game. Why am I in the building? To watch the basketball game. Exactly. That's why you're in the building. Those little kids in the building. Get the kids that, out That then. are constantly being marketed to aren't in the building to just to watch basketball games. Get the kids. Down. All those, like, girls that don't know what's going on about basketball aren't there. See, but that's the thing. That was you when the team launched because you were like, oh, the no, jer- man, the jerseys I still, are purple I still liked and it's him. Jurassic Park. Neat. <laughs> no, that's not true at all. Meanwhile, Zara and I are just like trying to... Can you turn the volume down? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to watch a basketball game here. That's insane. It's absolutely insane. Uh, before we move on from Raptors Republic, we got to discuss this because it is, it is one of the, uh, I guess, uh, almost unique characteristics of the site, the comment section. Is just is just hilarious all the time. Yeah, it's very reactionary, man. Um, the, they don't play games in the comments. We, we actually now we, we actually now require like you to have like a discuss account to comment. Before it, you, we didn't even have that. So anonymous people just. So before it was just like a cesspool <laughs> of just just pure hate and just, vile. Just and anger. Then, and then we made the mistake of making Tim W. Oh man. A, a moderator. Which and he did not moderate anything. He just put fuel on fire there. <laughs> and uh, Tim, I love Tim W. He's got his own opinions and all that. But Jesus, like he basically inflamed everything. And uh, yeah, the comment section is great. There's a lot of intelligent stuff going on there. A lot of reactionary stuff going on. But that's what makes it different, right? I mean, nobody's no, in the comments for great analysis. You're there for emotion and post-game reaction. It's great because there's debate and there's and there is instant reaction and and there's a 
ton of passion obviously yeah, it's, it's like a little little family almost and yeah. and everyone knows everyone and you know the guys that are going to be insane and you know the guys are going to be level-headed kind of thing i and like that, it. it's scary though then the numbers must be pretty crazy in terms of what is, is the is the most uh viewed thing the after the post game thing do you think like i, I think i think the, the quick reaction after a bad loss is probably the most popular post yeah like if you like lose to the Timberwolves <laughs> and people just on a eight. Wednesday night and by like eight and DeMar DeRozan goes two for 19, <laughs> that's like the perfect storm of like oh, shit man. happening in the comment section. That's great. And you've got the, there's a lot of alumni from Raptors Republic that are currently working in, uh, in other media yeah, as well, we have, right? We have a lot of, a lot of people actually, um, like Zach Harper, um, you know, Tom Liston used to uh, work for Sportsnet. Uh, we have a bunch of people that we kind of so-called graduated from uh, from Rappers Republic and other outlets to to have media careers, uh, which is great. Uh, which yeah. is, I think uh, which speaks to um, uh, which speaks to both the quality of people that we generally have writing for us. Even right now, I mean, if you look at Blake, I mean, Blake He's is awesome. to me is like one, like the top basketball journalist in in Toronto. Yeah. Like that's not a I'm I'm not overstating that. I think in terms of like statistics. Statistical knowledge and you know depth of knowledge of everything. I think he's right up there. Uh, William Liu, who used to write for us, is, yeah. is another great, great writer. And we have like uh, Cooper Smither is a guy that does breaking it down for us. I, I I don't know if there's anybody better in Toronto at breaking down a game than that guy is. I mean, and then you have like you know we have like some people who write from a humorous perspective. Andrew Thompson is is pretty good. So we have a roster which is quite diverse mm -hmm. and uh you w w whenever you see the two line or the byline in the uh, in the article you kind of know what the theme you're going to get what the view you're going to get which is something unique because you, you you don't necessarily just comment on the content but you also comment on the person writing the content which is something unique yeah right for sure and just to real quick go back to the tim w thing w was the his sort of uh the craziest one, I think, was his his tank for Wiggins. Was it not? Was that that the one when? That, yeah, in our time, I, that was yeah for well, yeah when we was, were around. Yeah. Anyway. Well, he he had a, he had a whole thing going on about Andrea Bargnani, uh, which you know which I agreed with him with. Uh, but you know, credit to him that he was always consistent about that Bargnani is pure garbage. <laughs> <laughs> like he was consistent in that <laughs> message, like before we even picked him. That's like he's amazing. like this guy's garbage. This guy's garbage. He is garbage, <laughs> and that message was consistent. But tank for Wiggins was a bit extreme, because the thing with tanking, and it's just common sense. We don't need to get too deep into it. Is that there's no guarantees, man. Yeah, no. There's zero guarantees. Who went number two after Wiggins? Jabari Parker was it? Oh man, that's a good question on the spot. Yeah, Parker went. Yeah, I mean, would you tank for Jabari Parker? No. no. You know, yeah, like it's like the margin of error, the 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 luck of the draw is so like precarious that you don't want to tank any. But at the same time, man, I mean, Masai Ujiri actually did he try tried, to do he that. Tried to tank, yeah, absolutely like, his tried. His success, you could make an argument if you're a pessimist or if you're being cynical, that his entire success is a fluke because he had Kyle Lowry with his bags packed, yeah, heading for the plane, and Dolan had second thoughts. Yeah. Right. I mean, it depends on how you want to look at history. It just right. depends on how you want to view things. I think that's very it's luck fair. Of the draw. It's luck of the draw. Who want to think three? The tank for Wiggins leads us nicely into think three because we, uh, you guys were gracious enough. You brought us on board. Nick and I started this podcast. Sean Nick, our media guy, when we started, he's just like, all you got to do is try and get on Raptors Republic. That's all you got to do. And we're like, all right, cool. And we did, I think, two or three. And. Out of nowhere, I think we posted one on Real GM, and then we got blocked from Real GM. <laughs> but blocked immediately. Yeah. Before that happens, by some miracle, Sam heard it and hit us up, and he's like, "Hey, man, do you want to go on our website?" And we we're like, "Oh my God, yes! Like that is we we're done. We made it. We're, it's over. We did what we were supposed to do." And then when shit really hit the fan was our Christmas episode when Nick and I just got New Year's. Oh, New Year's, right? Just obliterated drunk and did an episode on Tank for Wiggins. And good God, everyone just wanted our heads, like wanted to fucking murder us. That was that was the meanest anyone's ever been to me on the just, internet. Was who were these ja like? And to his credit, Nick was like, Ah, hell, what are you gonna do or whatever? And I was panicking. And I was like, We're fucked, man. I was like, They're gonna kick us off this site. We gotta like, <laughs> we gotta do another site. We gotta do another podcast and like. You know, backtrack Clean a little bit up, yeah. <laughs> because the thing was like, I remember our first podcast. I think we had seventy listens, and I was like, Dude. 
got 70 listens, man. We're killing it right now, right? And then <laughs> our second one, like, almost hit 100, and we're like, here we go, here we go. And then we went with you guys, and it was like thousands, and we're like, oh, my God. <laughs> Now people are listening. A lot of people listen. It has to be drunk and fucking idiots. And then within two and a half months, it was almost over. And I was like, we can't go back, man. We can't go back to 70 or whatever. <laughs> and, and Nick the whole time was just like, yeah, who cares? Don't worry about it, man. That's, I was like, I was like, it's the internet. It'll go away next, next time. And I, I, we, I remember that episode. We uh, were just so, paranoid. Like, I was paranoid you and, and Sam and, and Blake were just going to be like, all right, these guys are idiots. Get them off the side or whatever. No, I was never about that. But what, what, what was, uh, what I do remember about that episode was... Right before that episode, I had told like like five six people, you gotta check out Nick and Barry. It's amazing! <laughs> like they're they're great. <laughs> you gotta go check them out. Like it's oh, on the man. site. They're they're something different. It's unique. Just go check. And like after that, they, that was the first episode they listened to. Oh man! Ooh, it was like right around the Christmas party we had. Yeah. And um and they all came to me like they they're like yo that's garbage man yeah. I'm like nah 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 it's just uh, they were drunk it's okay yeah <laughs> so, so. just in closing uh, thanks for not kicking us off the site when we posted the drunken podcast nah it's good it's hey over. what happened to uh, the uh, tournament this year you guys weren't there I, I know there was we were a big at a, vacuum of talent we're really we're at a, we had there's this college conference every year that uh, like our record label showcases and Nick was showcasing this year and then I go there and represent so he's we had yeah. to do that i know it sucked we're pissed next year for sure man oh we're, yeah oh buddy we're booking you it want in. you want a rematch right yeah well, i got sure. we have to have that on the record what did is you got but did you guys oh, play this year blake was saying that you guys didn't no we played we had a tournament so, uh, same place it was no a, no but did you play oh i didn't play no i was no 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 nice yeah and, and blake didn't. even blake didn't play no yeah no that's just, right okay uh, no blake did play he no did? blake did play yeah yeah, yeah. okay in fact his uh, man it was something really shitty happened to his team because uh for some reason i had this like I don't know why I had in, I instituted this rule. Like at the end of the game, in the knockout stage, instead of going to overtime and next possession wins, it would come down to like a do or die three point shot. What oh my it? god! What are you doing a shootout? <laughs> yeah. you and idiot. his team, and his team basically took the shot and missed. And he eliminated. And it, at the time, I realized, man, this is a really bad rule. <laughs> <laughs> right? And we changed it on the fly. Okay? Next time, is next possession wins. But Blake's like, dude, it's too late. Yeah. There were refs this year, too. I yeah, remember. we had refs. Yeah, That's because correct. last time, we, uh, we had a couple of good players. We had many good players, but uh, when the game got tight, people just fouled them. So this year we're like, yeah, we can't do that. We got to get, happen, yeah. we got refs and free. There were some like that. really good players when that Crazy year. Crazy we good there. players, yeah. like really good. Like that was the remember the dude that was fasting and dunking, and you're like, yeah. How, what is going on, bro? <laughs> Just knocking down threes, like yeah. any of the leg braces, layups like, this or something. Is, this guy's yeah. it's so impressive. Well, that yeah, real quick, the that tournament. When when was the first year for that? Uh, the first time we held that was at the Raptors practice court. At oh yeah, that's right. Blake told me that. That's crazy. Yeah, that's when we first did it. Uh, we had a we had a, a hookup at the uh, at MLSC that kind of allowed us to organize that there. That's really cool. Uh, that was there, and then we had a Variety Village, which is in uh, prep school in um, it's in North York, I guess. It was Toronto, like a, yeah. a Crescent <coughs> School, right? That's right uh, oh, dude, yeah. that was our summer league school. That school's insane. Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. So we went to the gym there, and then the last two years it's been a Variety Village, which is a great facility. I love that place. It's huge. Yeah, nice. the gym is cool. Right? Sells out every year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who won this year? Do you know? I mean, I know uh, you know, but like the off the top. It was, uh, yeah, it was like the uh, the Sinui Mutts. Okay. What was the name of the team? Well, they I just can't. had like a couple of, like, there's one guy who was just like, you know, when you're like 6'4 and you can shoot. Yeah. You're in trouble. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's trouble. Like you get, you, he's got, he got the, he, he was pretty much as good as Andrea Bargnani. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see him in the Euros next year. Yeah, well. Thing four. What do you think of this Toronto Raptors team for next year? A lot of the uh, American networks are saying they're not going to make, or that Boston's going to overtake them. Well, and all that stuff. Okay, so big picture thinking uh, we talked about earlier. This is Cleveland's conference. It almost doesn't really matter who number two, number three is. And when you look at what Boston's done, yeah, they got Al Horford on top of a forty-eight win team. I get it. Like they're good, but it, does it? Does that make them already better than the Raptors? First of all, what does it really mean to be better than the Raptors? You're still worse off than Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, it's a moot point. Listen, Silver Mel, you're on the podium. All right, let's take it and enjoy yeah, it. So I'd still pick the Raptors ahead of the, uh, ahead of the Celtics. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I think Al Horford's a good player, but he's not a guy who's going to 
take you to become like a 58 win team. It's Al Horford, man. Are we, are we kidding here? Yeah. That's what I don't understand. Everyone's yeah. just losing their shit. Like they made all these moves. I was like, yeah, cool. But yeah, Al Horford's he's he's really really good. I'd love him to be on this team, but all right, then what? Then that's that's it. It's Al Horford. Yeah. Did you see, by the way, also that because I tagged you guys when the Kevin Durant signing happened when they posted it on um, the Players Tribune? Yahoo tweeted that he signed with Boston. Yeah, yeah. It was it was no. They they, they had actually multiple scenarios prepared. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they yeah. just like posted the ball. Some one. intern pushed the wrong button. Or yeah, yeah sorry, not tweeted. They posted on their main yeah, site. That, 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 that gave me a little heart attack. Man, when that happened, I just because two. Uh, Tim Golden, our buddy, and Beef, our other buddy, are hardcore Boston fans. I just text them. I was like, go fuck yourself. And they're like, what? And then I was like, go to Yahoo. And they're like, there's nothing there. And I was gone just that quickly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I was so scared. Oh, man. <laughs> That's trouble. That would have been a power shift. Or would have been. I mean, it's Kevin Durant. Yeah, it's Kevin Durant. It would have been a power shift. It's Kevin Durant. Did you think there was any chance he was coming here? No. No. Are you kidding me? Did you guys think that? A little tiny bit. I think that's giving Drake way too much credit here. Uh, 100% uh, was. I, yeah. I, I mean, it, you know, Washington signed his, like, high school coach yeah. as, like, a janitor or something. <laughs> so yeah. they, they have an outside chance. I mean, there are all these yeah. positionings going on. Yeah. And then uh, Toronto was never going to be there, man. Yeah, but he had he liked Vince Carter growing up. Dude, who didn't? Right. Vince Carter was massive. Like, yeah, he was... Yeah. I think every NBA player right now idolized... Uh, like he, we're at that age where... Like the the star players in the league that grew was up dude, like yeah. looking up to Vince. Do you remember that? Do you, I that dunk comp? That's one of the memories I have in my life. Like burned in my like I know exactly yeah. where I was. I know exactly what I was thinking. Like everything. I remember as he led up to that dunk, I was like, "There's no way this guy can live up to this hype." There's no. And then he pulls the windmill 360, and I just jumped. I was like, "I how did he just do that?" You know, like I think the the, the Toronto All Star dunk contest is the best since. Yeah, absolutely. Is that one? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. It might have. I mean, I don't know. It might have even been better. Those Zach Levine's dunks in any other dunk competition would be compared to Vince Carter's, and they're like, yeah, it was, it was cool. But Aaron, and by the way, I'm a gigantic mascot fan. As soon as you pull out that mascot, I'm pulling out the fifty, and then he fucking the spinning on. Oh the my goodness! Board? Oh god. Good guy. That was a good. That was a. That was a good dunk contest. I think it's like if you look at the dunk contest, there's been like maybe three which have anchored all the rest. Mm -hmm. You had the Jordan Neek. Yeah. Right in Chicago. Was it 88. Yeah. Yeah. You had um, <coughs> Vince, and then you had this, and then you had a couple of years where it was like just really it, everything between has been like forgettable. Like you don't even remember it. There were like Jason Richardson. Like the, yeah. I just remember the Nate Robinson, uh, Dwight Howard nonsense year after year. Where it was just like, can you guys stop this? The shit? one Dwight Howard year was pretty good. The I didn't Superman really like one, the yeah. Superman, Superman one, but I liked. He did one that year the where sticker. he put the sticker. Yeah. The mm. no one taught. Man, that was awesome. Like, but the worst to me was Brent Berry. <laughs> oh yeah. Doing oh, it in God. his warm up <laughs> yeah. jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Like, come on, show a little uh, bit of respect for this competition. I know. And white people should... I'm, I mean, I'm sorry. Guys, we shouldn't be in there at all. That's that's our... The three-point thing, that's us, okay? And uh, we messed up. So you think they can... They're going to win the Atlantic? Is that... Yeah, the Atl I think the Atlantic has more meaning this year. I think if you win it this year, you may want to hang up the banner and, like, feel good about it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because you got Boston yeah. in there as some competition. So there's that. But, I mean... Uh, you know, watching basketball for so long, like, the regular season really doesn't mean that much. You know, yeah. it's entertaining. It's all about how well you're prepared for the playoffs. Like, the last two couple, the last two seasons, you know, against Washington, we did a horrible job of playoff preparation. Like, mm -hmm. Kyle Lowry was injured, and we played him, like, 40 minutes when we didn't need to, like, in, in the late closing games, and he was shit against Washington. This year, we did the same, and we escaped Indiana with a win. Mm -hmm. Like, game five... Break it. Frank Vogel did us a massive yeah, favor listen, by George. playing essentially an entire bench lineup during the third quarter, allowing yeah. us to get back. If that doesn't happen, we lose that series, man. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. And and like we 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 just gotta manage Kyle Lowry, Demar Derozan much better, so that coming into the postseason we're in, we're in, we're playing our best basketball. To me, that's what it is. Second, third, yeah. I mean, I guess it matters like when you face Cleveland and all that, but I think that's what's most important: being ready for the playoffs. Could you believe those two wins though against Cleveland? That Man, I was in I was in Mexico at the time. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I was in I was at a bar and um <laughs> shocker. Uh 
And uh, there was a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of uh, tourists and stuff there and a lot of Canadians too. And they were watching the game and I'm like itching. I'm like, you know, the, the crowd's going, let's go Raptors. And I see some like Canada flags here and there. I'm like, should I start this? Yeah. Should I start this chant? How will I? Because you don't want to be like, you don't yeah. want to go, let's uh, go and <laughs> silence. Shut up, <laughs> shut up. You don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, after a while, and like, you know, at the bar, there were like some some nice girls came in as well and I was like alright they had like a Toronto little logo thing and I was like alright let's do this yeah. so I was like I think it was like DeRoz- DeRozan had like a floater in like the third quarter to like cut it to eight or something like that or whatever I don't know what the score was and I go pop, pop, let's go and immediately the bar goes Raptor no. let's go and I was like I'm like yes that's amazing I started that it was yeah. like the, for the entire third, fourth quarter, it was on, and we won both games. That's it was, wicked, it dude. was good. You know what I want? Thing five. The rest of the league, you mentioned Indiana. I feel like they're the team in the East that really made the most improvement with Al Jefferson. Uh, Teague is there now, too. <coughs> and then seeing Paul George for seven games in that series, he's he's the second-best player in the East, is he not? Oh, I think, I, I think so, man. I think in that... Um the guy is so smooth, man. Mm. Like he he just glides across the across the court. There's nothing awkward about his game. Like he's got this like like he, he'll cover the entire court in like three steps. Yeah. Like he'll go like Demario Carroll. He made him like he schooled him on many possessions. Ironically enough, it's like Norman Powell who shut him down when it counted. Uh, but uh, yeah, Paul George is an amazing player to watch, man. I would trade him for like anybody right now. Uh, I think Jeff the Jeff Teague signing um, is. Uh, you know, it's an upgrade over George Hill, for yeah. sure. Al Jefferson coming off the bench is a pretty good signing for them. I think, um, you know, it, it gives their young guys a bit of a coaching. You know, like, uh, it's, I think, uh, it's, it's, they're smart moves, low risk, high value moves, which they've made. And it's, it's going to pay off for them. But, you know, uh, would, I, would I take the Raptors still in a, in a seven game series against them? Eh, maybe, probably. Yeah. I, I, I'd still do that. I mean, I don't think too much has changed. Uh, since I think, uh, like I, I think we lost Bismack Biombo, which is big. But I think Jared Sollinger, the in shape Jared Sollinger, like he's he's, he's actually pe- lost a lot of weight. Yeah, he, he's looking he good, looks man. Leaner. Like I yeah. didn't recognize him actually. Like mm-hmm. there was a picture of him, and I was like, who the hell is that guy? Crazy. Uh, I th- I think he'll surprise us. Like he's not obviously as good of a rim protector as um, Bismack as, as Bismack was. But I think he's got good defensive rebounding abilities. He's got that short jumper. He can even hit the three a little bit. Yeah. So I think he, he, you, you'll see him add more offensive value than Biombo did. And he's in a contract year. And he's in a contract. It's the exact same situation, really. Yeah. So uh, you might see him blow up. In terms of the rest of the league, do you have any predictions or thoughts? What do you think of the Kevin Durant thing? Uh, I just, I man, you know, like, I'm... Like I love the Raptors and I hate everybody else. Like I'm basically in that category. Yeah. Like I don't like. There's a couple of like, Paul George is a guy, I, guy, guy, guy I really like. Like, like Tim Duncan, I always admired from day one. Uh, so there are some guys that I really like, but the rest of the league I pretty much hate. Uh, you know, I, they can go to hell and <laughs> it just does not matter to me. It just I don't give a shit. Uh, so Kevin Durant, I mean. Again, this is like where Barry and I sound like older, like, you know, people ready to enter the grave here. Yeah. But you would never see that kind of stuff. No. In the, can you imagine, like, like, like Isaiah Thomas losing to Jordan and then joining the Bulls the no. season after? There's no chance. He'd oh, stab him. I'm, I'm agreeing. <laughs> he would stab him. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think that's an age thing. I think that's. Uh, you know, that's. It's just like blatantly the most bitch thing you could ever do and you're like I don't you can't I, you can't justify it for me to respect you after doing that like I understand why you did it it's different I get it I'm not but respect it you know I don't it's respect such a what you did move. it's just like it's just like, like people say like, if, he, if he wins a title will it mean something I'm sure people will like their, their, their memory of what happened will be diluted over time but not to the point where you're going to forget the fact that you just you just, you just lost to the team <laughs> who you were up three one against yeah. with a chance to and close out at team. home, and you lost because of your poor shot selection. Mm-hmm. Right now, you could make a case that there's been some precedent set for this, where LeBron, you know, joined. Uh, I don't think that's but the it's same. But it's not though. the same, man. Not, Miami no. and Cleveland were not rivals at the time. They weren't like the two best teams of the conference. You had that team beat, and you fucked it up, and then you joined that team. But you know what? What this whole thing made me do. It made me love Russell Westbrook even more. Me too. I think he's going to go crazy next year. I think OKC is going to make the playoffs. But with him and Oladipo and... I don't know. He's going to be he's, he's like a man on a mission for sure. What did you guys think of the um, the SI rating? 
well, number 46 for DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, F out of here. 46? Ranked in 46. Yeah. Bit harsh, like behind Ugh. behind the guy you just mentioned, Stephen Adams. What? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah, they said he's the 46th oh. best player in the league, man. <laughs> I like Adams, but not better than DeMar DeRozan. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, it's... The guy was on the American Olympic team. What does he got to do? Yeah, he's a gold medalist. Back-to-back all For God's sakes. Ugh. I, hey, man, say... Be negative, because DeMar is the kind of guy that he's like, I, I, I will prove to you that I will show you Sports Illustrated, I swear to God. That's why I'm happy... Keep insulting the Raptors, man. Norman Powell, leave him out again next year. Like, he it, he just fuels him. It's just going to work out good for us. Keep insulting them, man. Are we hyping him too much? Norman Powell? Yeah. No. Yeah, man, I'm scared about that too. <laughs> like, I'm really, I'm like, cause he, we, we, how much was it? Like two months that we we're like, okay, Norman Powell's awesome. <laughs> but like, he's a bench player though. It's like it's not like he's dude, gonna. People are comparing him to Russell Westbrook. Oh, okay. Well, how and how, how old is those he? Those people he's are not, idiots. He's, he was an old rookie. He's old. He's an older rookie. Yeah, because I think he was at least a he's junior. He's like a four-year senior. Was he? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. well, a four-year college. Four-year college. Four college right, senior. senior. <laughs> Let's okay. flunk every class. Yeah. <laughs> ah, all right. I mean, yeah, we're for sure we're. I mean, I, th- I think he's going to be amazing. What what do I have to base it on? Two months of play and and uh, him on some weird tweets where he has a chip on his shoulder. But he does I'm have sold. a chip on his shoulder, man. Like he does you know, not. You like talk about like guy having a the combination of good talent, just insane work ethic, mm-hmm. and just that that intangible. The best way I can describe it is. It's what Terrence Ross doesn't have. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Like he's got I, I, that. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> he's uh I I I what Nick is saying though. It's like every time this people doubt the Raptors, they play better. So it's like, yeah, please continue to do that cuz did you and like they the, keep doing it too. Like yeah. constantly we just getting the, disrespected. It's unbelievable. The best was the Evan Fournier tweet after game or yeah. during game one. I was like, "You're Evan Fournier, you <laughs> fucking loser!" Hey, like, Erica, what? you piece of shit. Oh what my care? god, you look like a vampire. You're out of the playoffs. <laughs> Did you, you play for the Magic? Yeah, you, you know, play like, for the god. freaking Magic. Did you like the DeRozan signing? The I think you had to do it, man. I mean, yeah, the number is obscene. Whatever, thirty million dollars a year. Of course, he's not quote unquote worth that. I mean, he's a he has a lot of flaws in his game. But you got to look at it from a point of, uh, do do you just want to lose an asset for nothing on the market? Yeah. If if not Demar Derozan, then who? Mm-hmm. Like Kevin Durant's not coming here. No. Like who are you gonna go after? And he's so I, I mean, how I mean, on one hand, yes, he has flaws. Yes, he's frustrating. Yes, he's sometimes boring to watch. But at the same time, the guy is consistent in his production. The guy loves the city. The guy is a consummate professional. Work ethic is great. Yes, he's frustrating, but overall, he's seen as he's seen as a good player across the league. Even if you have to like, you know, trade him in a couple of years, he'll still have value. So you got to make the signing just based on the fact that you don't want to lose an asset for nothing. And the like you all that other stuff, the perception, the value, like he is everything this like as fans we've always wanted is someone that loves this city and doesn't bitch and like works hard and does, like he does everything. And yeah, he's not an elite player but he's like very very good and he, he likes it here imagine Vince Carter's talent with DeMar DeRozan's oh, attitude oh my god no I'd be Michael Jordan <laughs> I'd be Michael Jordan <laughs> okay well then to wrap this up real quick who's winning the championship if it's not Cleveland next year I don't want to say Golden State man I don't know I, know, I don't want to say it's Golden hard, State it's hard uh, but it's hard not to say Golden State San you know? Antonio San Antonio added Pau Gasol by the way they replaced Tim Duncan with Pau Gasol. That's pretty but good. But it's 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 Pau Gasol who is not really Pau Gasol. He as was we know twenty it. and ten last year. He was so good last year. Uh, I don't I don't know if those individualistic numbers translate in San Antonio, man. That's true. There's something. Okay. So who are you gonna say? Yeah, uh, if not Cleveland. I don't know, man. I guess the Spurs. I don't know. <laughs> I just. <laughs> That sounds very sincere. That's great. I, 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 I don't. I, I just hope OKC doesn't win it, and I hope they lose in the absolute. OKC? Golden, sorry, sorry, Golden State. I mean, oh, okay. I, I just hope Golden State loses in the most heartbreaking fashion, mm. in the worst possible way, where just like you just have to go and like think about your life half time. <laughs> like you got to go stand over a bridge and just that just contemplate it. First round, four games. 
No, 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 no. I, I want it to be more painful. That's not painful. That's embarrassing. I want it to be painful and embarrassing. Oh, you want you want I, I, I want like a, them to I want like a, a three nothing blown Ooh. lead. That's good. And losing because of a travel call. <laughs> <laughs> or, step. Like, or like a five-second violation inbounding the ball when you're up one and the other team scores on like a Hail Mary. Oh, my God. It's just heartbreak. Now, a lot of people talking about thing six. What is the future hold for Raptors Republic? Now, you, uh, you're you uh, taking your off, is that right? Yeah, I'm taking it. I'm going back to school. This time, not because my dad wants me to get a degree. <laughs> 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 because I'm going to, I'm going to try to do my, um, I'm going to try to do my MBA I'm going back to UFD. That's amazing. So Good try, for you, man. Try to finish that next year. So uh, I thought, while Blake's here, may as well take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. He's been a uh, workhorse, so he's got he's got us covered for this year. So I don't know. I'm gonna take the year off and uh, do some studying. Uh, but year for I think you're gonna find RR have again extremely strong coverage of the Raptors. I think you know three, four, five posts a day, uh, constant podcast with you guys. <laughs> Uh, you know, obviously with the Raptors Weekly podcast, and there's also going to be a Raptors Weekly extra podcast. So we're going to have three podcasts basically in rotation. Very cool. Um, and then you know you got the regular stuff, and we got a couple of we got we made some changes on the social media side. We added some people there, so you'll see that get better and better. Um, really, I mean, w- with the with the team we have, um, you know, there are other blogs out there which of course I check out and and, and I and I and I visit just for a difference of opinion. But really, if you if you go to RR, you'll you'll find that. You don't. You can go and somewhere else and check stuff out, but you don't really need to. Why? Why would you? So, are you going to do any podcasts at all? No, I'm done. I'm done. I, uh, you'll see me in one year. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. We might. We'll, we'll, we'll try to. We'll, we'll, we'll try to pry you away from your studies party? a bit. I'll be at the Christmas party <laughs> for sure. We should bring. Or do you want to bring this up? This is your thing. I, oh, at the Christmas party? Yeah. When a writer hit on my girlfriend in front yeah. of me. Oh, did he? There was a girl. <laughs> there's Michael? a writer. I was like, man, I'm right here. Jesus. <laughs> that was just going off on this man's lady, like right in front of him. It was, uh, it was great. <laughs> Who but, was it? Uh, Michael. But it was when oh. me and you were so <laughs> oh, hammered. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, N- I just kind of noticed it, but me and you were having such a good time. I'm like, gosh, she's fine. She'll be all right. <laughs> He told me after, he was like, does, 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 does he know you? I'm like, no, nah, I just met him for the first time today. He's like, oh. That Raptors Republic Christmas party, I gotta say, is one of my favorite events of the year. It is a it was a good time. It was a good time, particularly last year when it was uh, across the street from my house. That yeah. was uh, good because we were we went to do that. Remember that disaster show? We yeah. went out there and it got canceled, but they still paid us. Yeah. So then we just came and got hammered with you. Oh wow. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we you guys raced back into up. the city. Yeah, we we're supposed to do the show somewhere. Was I don't it, know, but it was like in Richmond. a it's, giant it's, it's, theater, and there was zero people no there. There was like, like wicked. Dude, there was like, I want to, not exaggerating, maybe one couple, and they're like, do you guys still want to do the show? And we're like, ah, what? <laughs> no. Like, I don't think so, no. A big dinner theater, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> what happened to the couple? <laughs> they, they were, they, they wanted the show. I think they the wanted the show. Yeah. They honestly wanted the show. And the guy, the book, but finally the book, one, there were two bookers, and one of them was just like, no, these guys aren't going to talk to these two people. For, and the worst was, I was closing that show, so I would have done like, I do like 40 minutes to two, two people, people in an empty theater <laughs> i'm just like shitting my pants i'm like I, it's gonna be spoken word for 40 minutes but yeah we got to we got to leave and hang out with you guys which was good okay so the podcast blake and of course the 905 coverage too you guys got the 905 down. yeah that's uh that's a nice little toy we got there eh? yeah bruno a little playground <laughs> yeah. for bruno is bruno <laughs> you know, ever gonna he can come do out a little gym no like no? If, I to, if i had to put money on it he's not uh it's not, it's, it's, not, it's not happening. It's a nice toy. I mean, what uh, what he does have, and again, this is what Blake and what the what the what you read is that he's hitting about thirty five percent from three in the um, in the D League, and that's basically all the shots he's taking. He's taking like twelve threes a game, right? Yeah, and, <laughs> and his shot is unblockable. They tell me, and yeah, he's like six eleven with like a his fourteen wingspan. foot wingspan. Yeah, so right. he's, he's basically climbing a ladder when he's shooting. Yeah, yeah. So. It, that's something that I could see translating to the NBA, obviously. Like, if he becomes, like, a deadly three-point shooter, you could bring him on and he could he could do something. Defensively, from what I've seen, and I, and I saw actually a lot of D-League last year. Don't ask me why. He, his footwork's gotten better. I don't think he can hold his own defensively in, in the NBA right now. Mm-hmm. But I think that's my – like, th- that's what's that, – that's one of the things that's preventing him from being part of even Dwayne Casey's, like, peripheral thoughts – is that can this guy actually play defense? Can I afford to even keep him on? 
Right. Right. I, th- I think his three point shot might get better this year mm-hmm. as he gets stronger. He gets more motion. Remember, this guy played started playing basketball very late in his uh, yeah. in, in, in his in his life. So he's still he's basically still developing at a the way a fourteen year old would. Like if you project <laughs> out his uh, when he started uh, playing, he's in grade nine right now, yeah, right? Yeah. Essentially, and so I, I think it's still uh, you know we're still two years away, I guess. Mm. Uh, we still got two years. Yeah. Judging uh, the guy was right. He was uh, bang on when he made that comment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a good call. Was oh, a good so we got mad at it, but it was, uh, it was a turns out call. entirely entirely factual, justified, perfect. Too bad uh, that. I remember what were you? I think we were watching that here, weren't we? Were you here? Uh, yeah, yeah, we were watching like, right here. They're like, ah, there's no. Uh, there's no HD footage of this guy. I think we've got something here. And they pull out like a VHS of like him just playing in this Brazilian gym. I was like, oh, oh, oh Masai. But, uh, Spe- speaking of that, I remember when um, when they drafted Rafael Arruyo. Oh, <laughs> God. Right? And it caught everybody by surprise to the point where ESPN, they like, couldn't find a clip for him. Like they had him spotted like <laughs> in the second round. Like they had to like, ru- like where's the Arruyo A? Like find him. Like it took like a delay between they showed his highlights. And when you saw the highlights, you're like. Why yeah. is Babcock the worst GM in Toronto sports history? It, it 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 has to be. You know, I was of the belief at some point, stupidly enough, that he got the best he could get out of Vince Carter at the time on the trade market. That's no, that's insanity. That's th- I don't believe there, there are all. people who swear by that. That's insane. No, two first round picks and a bunch of Williamses. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and a guy I, that doesn't want to play here. Yeah. yeah, who we have to pay not to play. Yeah, here. we play. Yeah, yeah. And I I find myself thinking that no I think he could have done better and at worst you shouldn't have done anything you got exactly. a guy under contract yeah. just let the situation play itself out a little bit he's injured you're trading him when he's injured sulking at his lowest possible trade value dude he signed to a contract just hang on to him yeah. dude, till the summer it, the, and then the other thing was though. Like we were mentioning earlier, the NBA is uh, is about marketing. So his value wasn't just that he was a superstar player. He was a superstar. Like he was to a franchise that is so valuable, even more than his talent. And he still gave him away for nothing. As just like you, I remember there were times. I remember like I think it was his second or third year. There were just like like rumors going around or whatever. And there was one trade rumor that was like you know discussed. I'm sure it wasn't legit, but it was Kobe for Vince straight up. And some people were like, no, I wouldn't do that. Like yeah. I, I don't want. Vince for Kobe, like I don't want Kobe for Vince. I mean, you know, and then, I mean, the guy, no, no one would want Kobe anyway. But for uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, he just, I, I, I've never been more mad at a pro sports team than when they made that trade for Vince. ESPN Vince. Mag, uh, I don't know if it's still in publishing or whatever. At the time, had like, like their, their, like one of their covers was like just Vince Carter. Like with a, with a white Toronto Raptors jersey on, with like just looking menacing as always, with like saying like, air car like the best basically the best player in the NBA. This is when Kobe's around. Yeah. Like, what uh, maybe what you know fans right now and newer fans don't understand was that we had by a large consensus the best player in the NBA on our team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we had the early LeBron. On the Raptors, and that's not an exaggeration. We're no. talking about like we're like jonesing for Wiggins right now. Yeah. Right. We had LeBron on our team. Yeah. yeah. For yeah. like a couple of years, oh, playing yeah. at peak efficiency. Can you do you can, do you even remember those times, man? No. And like it was insane. To winning, just, like, crazy, man. leading the All Star voting. Like he yeah. was the top. Killing vo- the yeah. All Star voting. Oh, just and just I'm yeah. I remember they would show on ESPN that they would show dunks of his after the whistle like i met the one the crazy yeah. dunk i ever saw was there was an alley-oop i think doug christie threw it i have this burn in my memory and the whistle had blown and he threw it and vince jumped from like this the one wing like free throw but he was like he looked literally like he was above the goddamn rim and just th- and they're like this play didn't even count but we have to show this mm-hmm. and yeah. it's on espn you know like i was just like Th- there were some dunks like my, one of my favorite uh vince carter dunk like the dunk that kind of announced him like, it was the all-star game and all that, obviously. But there were a couple of in-game dunks that he threw. One was against the Pacers, where he went on Chris Mullen on the left baseline. Mm. And he drove left, and he pulled it back for a jam that nobody saw coming. It was like a reverse slam. You can YouTube it, man. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. There was no PBR back then, right? Yeah, yeah right. So you're yeah. like, whoa, what the hell just happened here? <laughs> no, what was that? Like, how did he finish that? Like, that's, he's not, you're yeah. not supposed to finish that dunk. Yeah. Yeah. You just drove left. Try to finish with a weak hand, 
switched it back and jammed it over a guy. Yeah. That's not that's not normal NBA highlights. That's something. And then he had a couple on Theo Ratliff. He's yeah. a freak, oh, man. Man. It's just yeah. So so he wants to play for two more years, Zara. Are you, All the power are you, are, you, are, you, are you bringing him back though for the last the last year? Would you? Um, uh, why not? I mean, uh, it, it might be a bit of a distraction, but I think, like, have we reconciled with him? I, th- I think we're done with the recon- reconciliation. I part, don't care right? anymore. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I really don't. I mean, if you want to retire his jersey, no, don't. it just seems like such a it's sad. going out of your way thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he left you. No, they Hung definitely forced yeah. the city to be like, listen, it's not so bad, right? Like Sportsnet read the documentary yeah. down our throats. Like it was, they are they're doing something, so we have some sort of history that we're like, we had that guy, and he, we don't hate him. We can't retire him though, man. It's just definitely it's not. too it's too silly. No, 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 no. You can't retire the guy's jersey for what the hell are we retiring it for? Who who is a raptor that you would retire at this point? Who's the most eligible raptor to be retired at this point in time? I don't think it's anyone until you retire tomorrow. So tomorrow, like tomorrow, 10 when tomorrow years hangs or whatever up, it is, 15 years or whatever. That's tomorrow. the one you put up, yeah. No oh. JC Calderon? <laughs> no, no, but I'm, we're, not, we're not retiring about the Calderon truth. <laughs> right after Zontabak, I think. That's Amir yeah. Johnson? Hey, I did the article on Raptors Republic that they should do a split Amir Johnson, Vince half, Carter, half, retirement. Have Vince half. I got, shit, I got shit on pretty hard in the comment section for that one. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, is there anything else we forgot to? Cover? Do you have any regrets, Zrar, about this entire rap? Is there anything you thought like, oh shit, I should have done that years ago, or is that all kind of gone? It's not like I don't really think about it too much. Mm-hmm. I've, it's, it's just this is um, like I'm glad that the site is at the point where it's like you know paying for people it's like generating enough revenue where you're able to hire people and, mm-hmm. and it's self-sufficient but it was never ever intended to be like a business right it was never intended to be that it just kind of became that mm-hmm. just because of you, you got to pay people for their time and all that but it was always about just having fun it was but like I, I never ever had aspirations to become a journalist or anything like that so you know what i mean like i, I was always about like just have some fun on the side and focus on your real work or whatever. So I, it's I never look at Raptors Republic as what are my regrets. I, mm-hmm. I don't. It's just it's been fun to write about the Raptors, to vent and whatnot. That's all it's been. It's not a. I never think about it too hard. And we have a pretty good team where I don't have really have to think uh, think too much. It's just a, it's kind of, it, the ball kind of keeps rolling at this point. No, yeah, it's rolling. And it's the, rolling. The True Hoop Network. I mean, it's um the other sites. You know, some of them are pretty good. Is there are there any? They're not there can't be any. Comp- are close to I mean I I think the True Hoop network has been wasted to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean that that network had the mo- we should be the True Hoop network should be kicking SB Nation's ass. We had Zach Lowe, man. Wow. Zach, you, you like all these writers that you see like working for SI now, Haberstra, all these guys. Mm-hmm. They they used to be on the True Hoop network. Right. It's it's all that talent that you see on CBS Sports now. Uh, James Herbert he used to come to the Raptors Republic fan parties way back when and wow. used to hang out right for the site. Um, like we, they used to all be part of the True Hoop Network. It's just that the you know I don't want to name names here, but it it just didn't work out there. They just weren't serious about it. I I felt because the amount of basketball writing talent you had there at the time. Including Blake, who was at the time there too, it should have been a lot, a lot bigger. Like mm-hmm. it should have been your number one basketball spot for everything, given the talent you had. Right. And Zach Lowe was leading it. Zach Lowe, man. I know. It's insane. Zach freaking Lowe. Who was he writing for? With the like, what was it? I think it was for like a bunch of blogs. Think Clipper blog. Maybe he was. He was. Uh, he was wow. around there. Yeah. Is there any way to, that it can come back? Do you think? I mean, or the True Hoop Network. Yeah. I I don't think so. No. No. Being blunt. All right. What do you think of other sites out there like the Ringer and that? Yeah. Yeah, the Ringer is uh it's trying to live up to Grandland. Trying. Right? It's trying. trying. Yeah. It's, it's doing as be- best it can, but it's not there yet. I hate the design, the freaking green. This burns my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it does look like something I would have made in high school, you know. Yeah. The night before, I had to finish the assignment. I'd be like, "Ah, oh, here, that's that's a ringer." And it's like, "Oh, cool." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are there things that you uh, want to do with Raptors of Public that you haven't? I like- think I, I'd like to. I'd like for it to be in a place where it can uh, become more of a livelihood for more people. 
I think mm-hmm. that's the ultimate, at least for me, like if I, from a satisfaction perspective. Is that possible it, on, with oh, online? I think so. I think so. For sure it is. Yeah. For sure it is. I think, I think uh, our volume numbers are at the point where that's totally possible. Oh, mm-hmm. no. I mean, I mean, I know. I mean, I just mean in, in the, in whatever it is, industry in general, are there websites where you Dude, can. Dude, have you heard of BuzzFeed? Mm. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Well, of course it's possible. All right. I'll throw like 40 ads in your face before you can view my content. <laughs> Close this pop-up. Find the X. <laughs> Find the X, man. No, it's entirely possible. We're not going to do that our art, but I mean, we're not going to I mean the, the ad bombardment, but it's completely possible, man. There's a whole model out there built on ads and, and, and sponsorships and uh, Patreon and that kind of stuff. By the way, patreon.com slash rappers probably check it out. Yeah, so you you guys launched that last year. How yeah. did the how's how does that does it's, that work? Is I mean not even just for you guys specifically, but just in general. Is it that a, it pays the bills. I yeah. mean we we have some uh, some income coming from there. It it pays a lot of the bills. So it's uh it, it's part of our revenue stream and um yeah it's it, it, it's a it, there's no like one source of revenue right. There's there's a bunch of things you have to like we have podcast sponsorships, we have ads, we have Patreon, we have a bunch of things going on which bring in. Know, uh, which we bring in cash, and we basically we don't like nobody's getting rich off of this, right? right. We're paying our bills basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like I'm not, I'm not uh, <laughs> Sam, me, or anybody else. I'm not taking home a freaking check ever. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> in fact, we 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 give up money uh, to yeah. run the site, and mm-hmm. uh, which is fine because, as I said earlier, we do it because we love the freaking raps, man. Mm-hmm. And now, of course, Blue Jays Republic has launched, and uh, yeah, that's a fun little experiment. TFC Republic, but, uh, but uh, the Jays aren't really complying. Yeah, no, that's, but uh, <laughs> that, uh, I can't. Even, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, that's that's we were, we had a quick email about this the other day where you're like, oh, I'll take it compared to the last twenty years. It's like, no, last twenty years I knew they were garbage. Now they're, it's like this team shouldn't it's be, be good, garbage. Man. It's supposed to be good. This I, lineup? Are you kidding me? If you had said this lineup to me, yeah, like three years, been like, oh yeah, Tulo's gonna bat sixth. You'd be like, what? Mm. Like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> it's an all star team. Cool. So how many yeah. titles are we gonna win? Right? We still got the wild card locked up. Mm-hmm. Right, so we get that game, and who are we playing? Baltimore in it? Is that is that what it's going to be? Probably. Uh, I think so right now, yeah. yeah. As of now, yeah, whatever. Like. Um, I like our chances there. Uh, you don't want to be in that position, but no. Yeah, but it's uh, I like our chances there. Uh, but when I look at it, so I, I stopped following the Jays after they traded Sean Green. I remember that. It was either Delgado or Green they had to sign. I, was like, I, I did not understand why that was the case. I why it was like either or. Because yeah. there's no cap. Mm-hmm. No. You're making enough money. What? Well, that's a, I mean, that's the thing with this, when they're going to let Edwin go this year. And it's like, why? <coughs> you, you own, Damn, he can do it. The thing with the Jays that kills me is they own the team, the stadium, the TV rights, the radio rights. And through most of the country, they own the internet. So if you want to stream it, you're paying them. There's no, you can't make more money. And if, if you can't, and the games are selling out, and if you can't sign big time free agents, maybe running a baseball team is not for you. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's just what I can't take seriously. Yeah, man. Uh, with, with the Jays, I just, I, I'm a little different than you because I've always taken the long view on them, the historical view. I, I, I get what you're saying. Like those teams, you knew they sucked. Mm-hmm. And like this team is expected to be good. But, the Jays have been in the dark for so freaking long, man. As you and your dad know on your podcast, yeah. it's uh, it, just any light is good light for me. I remember I'm going back to Sean Green, man. Giving up on the Jays in 2001 was one of the best decisions I ever made because they proved me right, man. Right. They didn't do shit for the next 15 years. That's what I did with the Leafs in yeah. uh, like I think it was 06. I was just like oh, great decision. Give up. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I've never been happier to be honest. Uh, yeah. So anyway, Blue Jays Republic. Great site, and then TFC Republic as well. Yeah, that's that's started by Steve Gennaro, um, and um, yeah, I mean it, it, these are like little experiments we've, we're doing on the side. Uh, we have some people interested in it. Obviously, the uh, the the TFC market isn't as big as, uh, uh, as 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 the Raptors or the Jays market, but it's a couple experiments which you want which you want to run. We're gonna keep doing it for the next uh, year or so and uh, see how it goes. Again, it's it's a similar model to RR where it's done by people who aren't really in it for the money. It's passion. They're in it for because they love the Jays and they and they want to write about it. So same same ingredients, hopefully the same success. When is Argos Republic launch? <laughs> <laughs> Toronto Rock. Did you have you been to the uh no. the uh <laughs> the soccer stadium to watch the football game? No, no, I would not. No. Have you? I drove by. It looked <laughs> sad. <laughs> I drove by, but I didn't look at it. <laughs> Looked out the way. I didn't turn my head. The, the, uh, let me tell you this much, though. 
the red is far more blinding when the seats are empty <laughs> compared that's to the hilarious. blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, okay, we're going to end. We're going to do a rapid... Well, I mean, we're just going to do quick, like quick five things about your favorite Raptor stuff real quick. Are we? Yeah. No, it's, yeah, we're going to. It's going to be fun. You're going to love we're it. Do, we're doing it, goddammit. So, uh, real quick, all-time favorite Raptor jersey. All-time favorite Raptor jersey. I got to go with the purple and black. The Vince I like dunk the, competition uh, here? Yeah, the, the, the black on the back and the purple in the front. Mm-hmm. Dig that. It was simple. It had the purple theme. Because the purple is something that I was really sad that the franchise let go. Because before we overdid the purple, right? It was just like, purple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, purple, guys. We're purple. Yeah. It's like, dude, just tone it back a little bit. Like, it's a nice color. Yeah. But just, it's an accent color. It's yeah. not... Hints of purple. Yeah. yeah. It's not the primary leading color. Yeah. So I wish that they would introduce the purple, but just make it a little subtle, man. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. you know, I yeah. dig it. Uh, favorite Raptor player of all time? I mean, obviously Vince is like the the the, the answer here because he's the most exciting. Um, I don't. Um, Alvin Williams is somebody I always liked. Like I thought he was oh, a yeah. good floor general. N- you know, l- not the most talented player, but not even him. I'm I'm gonna pick out the guy that I used to love to watch, and uh, you know he didn't play here for too long, but Del Curry. Ooh, very Del nice. Del Curry was a guy, and I because I'm a guy that admires quick releases, hence the corner sniper Twitter yeah. handle. Yes. Uh, Del Curry had a release where his feet did not need to be set. Right. Right. His uh, his shooting mechanics were all like upper body. Yeah, shoulders. It was like all elbow it, yeah. and that. So he was leaning in and all kinds of shit, and he used to go in, and that was amazing to watch. I remember like in that uh, in the game that Vince missed the game seven in Philly. It was Del Curry who actually hit that transition pull-up mm-hmm. three to give the Raptors a chance to actually be in that position. So Del Curry is one of my uh, most enjoyable Raptors to watch. Nice. Awesome. Favorite coach? Raptor coach of all? Butch Carter, man. No. <laughs> that's most entertaining. Different answer. Most that's, entertaining. that's the wrong answer. <laughs> Pick another. He's a, he's a, he's let it go on Twitter a little bit. He's an idiot. But at the time, he's let it go on TV too, man. He's he's, he's a out moron. Of his goddamn mind. <laughs> he's an idiot. I mean, the, the Raptors, the Raptors, um, the Raptors. Coaching uh, staff over the years, there's not too much to pick from. Mm-hmm. I right? thought Brendan Malone was good in that those first years. It's like, man, that guy got what? He got them twenty Dude, wins or the, something. The the, like, the 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 barometer of success was so low. Like <laughs> it could have been like Nick and me in there, and yeah. like, yeah, he was a great coach. Yeah. Uh, I I'd say Dwayne Casey, man. I mean, overall, uh, I mean, the one thing I've always credited Dwayne Casey with doing, yeah, he's got some issues with timeouts and whatnot, all kinds of stuff, but. Credit to the guy for getting this team to play hard night in and night out yeah, man. and give the effort. Because if you ask like a lot of execs, I think they'd, they'd say that is the coach's number one responsibility. It's motivation. Get him to play, it's yeah. getting guys, getting millionaires who got nothing going on, who got long-term guaranteed deals to come out and give a shit. He's made them do that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of coaches. Look at George Carl, the most experienced coach in the world. He can't get his guys to play hard. Yeah. Dwayne Casey's done that even in losing seasons. Mm-hmm. Favorite Raptor media personality? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> media person? Does Blake count? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I guess technically <laughs> he does now. Like? I think if you're talking about TV audio, <laughs> I mean, can <laughs> does Blake count as the best? <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna give you a. I like. Matt Devlin when he's on Turner Sports. Right. Interesting. Because Matt Devlin on Turner Sports is very different than Matt Devlin mm-hmm. on whatever TSN. Matt Devlin on Turner Sports is a consummate professional who's yeah. funny, in rhythm with the guy he's calling the game with. You can't even tell it's Matt Devlin. You think it's just some hilarious guy you just want to have a beer with later. All right. Right? It's true, yeah. <laughs> he's very different. <laughs> he's a totally different cat. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'd I, I'd pick that as a as a compromise. Dude, thank you so much All for right, stopping man. by. We're glad that you're uh, chasing the NBA dream. NBA. <laughs> stack those, I like it. Stack those degrees, man. But gonna miss you this year. But look forward to hearing you and reading you the following year. Got it. Because you're coming back, right? Well, I'll be listening to you guys for sure. Oh, 
sir. Thank man. you, though. Oh, thanks thanks in for not firing us when we got hammered. Thanks again, man. No problem. It's amazing to be here. The studio's amazing. It's I fun. like what you've done with the furniture and lights. Well, <laughs> we spare no expense, you know? We're, uh, we're top notch. That's going to wrap it up. Oh, baby. That was a good one. That was good. Hit us up on Twitter, at TalkingRaptors, RaptorsRepublic.com, and follow them on Twitter, at RaptorsRepublic. Go Raptors.